United States alone, we've had some notable shootings back from 1927 at the Bath Township, Michigan shooting where we lost 45 souls, followed by the uh, University of Texas massacre where we lost 16 souls in 1966, Columbine in 1999 where we lost 15 souls, the Virginia Tech massacre, 33 souls lost, and the Connecticut shooting where we lost 26. We've had various shootings throughout the United States at schools, sometimes done by students, sometimes done by uh, outsiders. So what can we do? So layers of security is how we're going to uh, start off and uh, discussing. This is very important, having layers of security. If you just have one lock on your door, or one security officer at your front entrance, you're not doing enough for your school or for your facility. We have to implement different levels of security that will slow down an intruder, that will minimize um, the, uh, the possible uh, chaos or victims um, if someone is able to get inside your facility or into your, uh, into your school. We're gonna start off with basics, cameras. Do you have them? Are they positioned properly? Are they pointing straight down? Are they recording? Uh, I go into schools in the city and Long Island and I find out that cameras aren't working or they're not positioned properly or they're positioned at a dumpster. So what you want to look at as one of your first layers is outside of your school is your camera system and how they are set up, where they are pointing, what they are recording. Okay, now cameras won't prevent everything from happening. They're a deterrence. Many people think, oh, if I have cameras and I'm okay. No, your cameras are a deterrence. They let people know they're being recorded if they come in. It lets the bad guys know they have something. Doesn't mean it's going to stop them from coming there, but it's, a, it's one of the layers that you should have, and that's what's very, very important. Taking the time out to make sure that these cameras are in place, in position, being recorded, can be remotely viewed, whether it's by key staff members, in, in an office, or if you're not in the uh, school, that it can, be, um, it can be viewed somewhere else on an iPad, on an iPhone. Continuing with your exterior perimeter security, fencing. Schools in Manhattan, some schools have fencing. Just did an assessment where we had uh, fencing on a school in Manhattan. More so you have, uh, you have that on Long Island. But if you have fencing that's part of your access point into your school, make sure this fencing is in good order and is working. Uh, what I would str strongly recommend is to have an access control system that will be part of your main entrance doors, your uh, entrance into your, uh, through your fence, and make sure that it is operating uh, properly um, and, that it's, and that it's checked. Again, it's one of the layers that you can put into place that will help you in addition to your cameras. And I'll go back over all of these points that I'm making uh, right at the end. Security officers, if your school has a security officer, use them, okay? Give them the tools so they can do their jobs properly. If you have security officers outside your facility, I'll take an example of, of a Long Island school that I was just in. Uh, I drove up to the school, the security officer was in, a, in a, uh, a private vehicle, had a yellow jacket on, asked me what I was doing. I explained, my name is David Baum, I'm here to drop off my bag, then my son left. Okay, no problem go through. Now, great, you know, the security officer stopped me, told me what I was supposed to do. That security officer should have a list of all the parents, students, and take those extra 30 seconds and say, hang on one second, Mr. Bone, let me check. Okay. I went back to that security officer afterwards and I spoke to him. And basically this is what he, was, what he told me. He said, this is what I was told to do. This is what I was given. All right. So he's doing his job to the best that he can based on the information that he's, he's given. So it's up to the administrators in the school to use your resources properly and use them uh, for your benefit. Give them the tools, those security officers, at a guard post, um, at a point where you have to enter the school uh, onto the property before you get to the main building. Give them the tools to do their jobs. It's very, very important. Our main entrance doors. Are our doors locked? Can you just walk into your school anytime you want. Many schools, you can, okay? Your doors should be locked. You should have an access control system, a buzzer system on your front doors. 
yes, obviously they have to be able to uh, egress from those doors if there's an emergency, um, but those main entrance doors should be locked, all right? I carry a firearm. I go into schools all the time. I'm in. I'm a good guy. I'm not going to do anything wrong, but I'm inside the school because the door is wide open. There's no, there's no buzzer system. There's nothing. All right, so it's important. If you don't have doors that are locked, if you don't have uh, a buzzer system, look to putting that in. It doesn't cost a lot of money. The ideas, the recommendations, uh, things that we're speaking about are not items that cost a lot of money to do. They're, it's easy to do, they're smart to do, and these layers, cameras, fences, doors, will make your location much, much safer. I get this question all the time. Dave, should we have bullet resistant glass? Actually, I, I, Dave, do we have bulletproof glass? Should we put it in? Okay, so I explain to people what bulletproof really means. Doesn't mean that it's going to stop all the bullets. It's really bullet resistant glass, okay? Do you put it in? It's a good question. It's very costly, especially if you have a lot of windows, and many schools do. And that's something you have to think about. But I'll put it in this perspective for you. And you can make your own decision on that. If you have a classroom that is street level, uh, and anyone can look into it, where we do have a lot of those in Manhattan, and someone, instead of going through those layers of security, going through your front door, going through your access system, going through your security guard, decides, well, it's easier if I can just walk past the classroom and I want to do harm to kids and just shoot out the windows into the, uh, into the classroom. Bullet-resistant glass will slow that down. Eventually, it'll break and bullets will go in, but it will slow it, will slow it down for a couple of shots. Those few seconds might give enough time for that classroom to get out, to evacuate, to go to a different location for someone to set the alarm and bells off so help can, uh, can come. So you have to think to yourself what, what bulletproof glass will do for you, bullet resistant glass will do for you, and is it worth saving a few seconds because it may keep someone alive or keep a child alive? My opinion is yes, but that is an opinion that not everyone carries based on budgets, on what you can do. But it can be a capital improvement project that you do uh, as years go on. Uh, but it's something to think about and understand what uh, bullet resistant glass provides. Communication at the door. I go to a school, I wave, the person in the lobby looks at me, hits the buzzer. I'm, in the, I'm inside. No communication, no questioning. How can I help you? Who are you? Uh, what are you here for? Um, and I'm not speaking about high traffic times when we have uh, 50 kids, 300 kids, 600 kids coming into school. I'm talking about after we have our high traffic times and kids are in their classrooms that the school should be going, should be locking down their perimeter doors. And, and these procedures should be put in place. We shouldn't let anybody just walk into our school. And this happens and is still happening after the Sandy Hook shooting. Uh, and I'm sad to say it's happened in my school district, uh, which really upsets me because I have two children uh, that go to uh, uh, middle, middle school and I can just walk into their school at any time. And yes, there's a receptionist there um, and uh, he or she is very nice and very helpful, but what are they going to do once you're inside the heart of the school? Access control systems I was speaking about regarding your fence and your main doors. Access control systems can be very helpful. Um, you can have staff, or your workers, all have cards to access into your building. Your doors are locked. You don't have to waste staff time on someone opening the door for your staff to come in and out. Um, it can also be given to parents or guardians, depending on the size of your school, depending if that's what you want to do. But access control is very helpful. It's not expensive. It's very easy to uh, give someone a card and take that card away. Uh, you have an employee, a staff teacher, that, uh, staff or teacher that may have gotten fired, um, you can uh, deny the access. You have a parent who's now going through a custody battle, uh, order of protection is given, now you can deny access. Uh, it's very, very important and it doesn't cost a lot of money to implement, to look into, uh, and it can save you uh, a lot of aggravation at your door, especially if you're giving your lobby greeter or your security guard at the door 
uh, the responsibility of letting every single person come into your school and having to identify uh, that person. This will help, this will take away from uh, the security officer having to deal with employees that are coming in every day, and it's, very, uh, uh, it's, it's a very good tool. A man trap concepts. Everyone asks me about this also. Okay, we have a man trap concept. And if I, have a man, if I have a man trap in my school and I got 500 kids coming into my school, how can it work? Okay, well, let's explain what man trap, uh, a man trap concept is, as you can see on the screen, just so you know. You go from a public area, you access one door, that door has to close, you're in the middle, the second door will not open until the, uh, the door behind you closes. You can get out at any time if there's an emergency, uh, but that's the man trap concept. Now, some schools, they're small, and they just can't, you, you can't have a man trap concept. Some schools, you can. They're big enough, you have a big enough lobby, and um, a man trap concept can be, can be put in uh, to the school. Well, how do I get my kids through them? How do I get all the, uh, the students uh, coming into them? Again, it's not for your students. It's not for your faculty. It's after you get children into your school, out of your school at the end of the day, you have staff members that are by the door making sure uh, the kids are getting in and out. And then once they are in and out, for whatever that period of time is on your schedule, then your lockdown goes back in and people have to go through. And people have to understand that security is not comfortable. All right, we, we go through it at the airports. You know, it, yeah, it stinks. We have to go uh, and take our shoes off and go through scanners, but we're doing it for a reason. All right, someone hijacked planes and, 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 and flew into the, um, into the Twin Towers. So again, this is what happens. We, we want to look at different ideas, different things that we can do to slow down someone from getting inside to our schools. So again, another layer of security prevention is the man trap concept. Separation walls, kind of the same idea on your, on your man trap concepts. You have a separation wall, you have a big lobby, okay? This is something you can do next week. You can, get, you can put up separation walls in your lobby. What you want to do is you want to prevent someone from coming into your school and accessing your elevators or accessing your stairwells. Because once they're in that lobby and they have access to that, then they have access to the heart of the school. Again, you wanna slow it down. Uh, if you have separation walls that are uh, blocking off your stairwells and your elevators, then you kinda of have a man trap concept. Somebody comes into your school, they are in that area, they're stuck in that area uh, until they are either buzzed in or they're told to leave. All right, but it keeps, the, it keeps the school, the heart of the school, the heart of the facility or the building safer. Again, it's just another layer of the security that's very helpful uh, and can be implemented at a very low, uh, very low cost. Room identification. Um, I don't think, nope, they're not here. Uh, I did an assessment in, uh, um, in a school and None of the rooms had any type of numbering on them. Uh, and it's, it's a very dangerous, very dangerous thing. If you have first responders coming into, into the uh, school and the information is that they're up on the second floor, but you can't tell them they're in Mr. Bohm's class. Well, where is Mr. Bohm's class? Well, you go up the second floor, you're gonna make a right, you're gonna, you're gonna pass the water fountain. That's the last thing that first responders want. You know, if you can tell them, listen, the threat is in room 206 then they know exactly where to go. They know what floor to go to. They know where the room is based on the numbers as they see them, all right? But that's something that has to be implemented. And not only on your classrooms, but on your storage facilities, on your boiler rooms, everything should be numbered and labeled. So in the event that you have first responders coming into your school, you're going to know exactly where, uh, they're going to know exactly where to go based on any information that they may, they may receive. Again, something simple, another layer of the security uh, that can be added. Here's another great tool, inexpensive, um, and can be done on, uh, for some schools, not all, but combination handle locks. First floors are the, the heart of the school, and they give us access either to your lower level, if you have it, or up to the upper levels, second, third, fourth floor. The stairwell doors, you want to secure them. And one way to secure them is by combination handle locks. Those combinations can be given to, key, uh, to staff members so they can move in and out through the, uh, through the school. Now, if you have a stairwell that is 10 feet wide and you're in a high school or you're in a middle school, um, they ha actually have uh, gates that can be um, uh, built to fit 
your stairwell. Um, and in case of an emergency or in case of a lockdown, which I'll be going over soon, uh, those gates and those doors can be closed. Um, again, separation walls would be better because you'll have, uh, you'll be blocking an area to get to um, the stairwells. But if you can add combination locks, if your school is uh, not a very large school or there isn't, there's not a lot of activity where the kids are going through the stairwells from the first floor, combination handle locks are very, a very, very good tool and an excellent layer, again, of security in connection with your separation walls, with your access system, with your fences, with your cameras. It's very, very important. The person in your lobby, whether it's security or your greeter, has to have a tool other than a, a telephone at the desk. Some have walkie-talkies, and that's great, all right? But they should have a wireless system that they can hit if there's any type of an emergency, a uh, panic alarm system, both wired and uh, um, hardwired and wireless. This is an easy tool to do, uh, to use. If you have a security system in your building that you set up at night when you leave for the, uh, for the day, this is something that you can add on that's not gonna cost you maybe 40 or $50 to order the, uh, the piece from your vendor, all right? But it's a tool that you can give to your lobby greeter, your security officer, and even key staff members uh, where maybe you have issues um, uh, with parents or there's been threats, it's, a, it's another layer that you can give to them so they have as a tool. And it's very important and it will cost you very little. Public address system. Okay, without this, without having a good public address system where everybody can hear you, any lockdown procedures you may have, any orders that you may give, if, if one person can't hear it, then it's going to be, a, it, it's a failure. You have to have a public address system throughout your facility that everybody can hear. I know a lot of people have the phone, uh, phone systems that you hit the phone and it calls all the other phones, but it's the people in the hallways, it's the people in the stairwells, that if there's an emergency during a, uh, a change of class, they need to hear this information. If they don't hear this information, then they can't, make, they can't take the correct action, or your staff can't take the correct action. So it's very important to look into a good public address system in your school to be able to um, make sure that every part of your school, every wing, every corner, every stairwell, every gymnasium, every locker room gets all the information that uh, the classrooms are getting. School lockdowns. Okay, what is a school lockdown? There's a lot of scenarios on this, and you're hearing it a lot on the news.